Hey everybody, DJ Sixsmith here. You're watching the sit down. Talia Balsam here with us. Brand new movie, South Mountain. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing really well. It's good to talk to you. It was really interesting to watch your movie this morning because it took me on a whole emotional roller coaster I wasn't anticipating. So, what was it like being in the film and, and dealing with all these different layers? Oh, it was great. And it really, I, I think now that you just watched it, I feel like it's been behind me a little bit. But you know, much the way the movie unfolds is how I felt when, when we were doing it, you know, because we did shoot in order mm -hmm. and um, the story does evolve in that way. So it's almost like a play, right? When you say in sections where absolutely, yeah, it plays out like that. And, um, and I was saying to somebody, I was like, it's, it's funny, you can watch the movie and sort of see how it settles in too. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's really beautiful. I love the movie. Yeah, and it kind of goes to show just the messiness of life when you're growing older in a relationship, other people enter that picture as well. So what was most fascinating in terms of just unpacking, you know, the relationship part of this movie? That's funny, you know, it's like I was sort of thinking of it as a coming of middle age story mm -hmm. um, because when, you know, and I, I don't, I'm not giving anything away when I say this marriage sort of uh, ends abruptly with a, a new family coming in, a new baby. And I think when you're at a certain point in your life, at a certain age, you know, those tasks become, you know, when you think life is going one way, it's, it's, it's really hard to kind of rearrange yourself. And you're talking about empty nests, you're talking about your future at a certain age, you're, you know, so it's very big. And um, it's for her, I think it was for that character of Lila, very shocking. And how to unpack that and think what your future might be. And I felt, akin to it a bit because my son was about to go to college and I, I always think you get, you know, jobs for a reason. And I, I felt a lot of uh, kinship with it. I know it's a little more dramatic than what that was, but I could, you know, a lot of that loss and stuff, you know. I think it's always good when a film or a TV show can time up with what's going on in your life. And even just this whole picture of identity, when you think about that character, like she was so tied to her husband and to her family. And then she starts doing things that you never would anticipate, but you get in that predicament and it's just kind of the wheels fall off in a sense. I know, she, the wheels do fall off and she's <laughs> left alone to kind of figure it out, which is a blessing, but it was also probably, you know, and I was saying, it's like, what do you do when you had no control over it whatsoever? And, um, but I think it's, like I said, I think it's laid out so beautifully and that she arrives somewhere, you know? Mm -hmm. Different, different story, but arrives. No question. So you've been doing movies and TV shows for quite some time now. What's it like for you to, to see the evolution, even coming to this, where it's like, you know, you're in under an hour and a half, you could watch it at home, not going to be in the movie theater right now, but what's it like for you to be on this journey? I think it's been really amazing. I feel so grateful that we got to be at South by Southwest and other other festivals that are not existing right now and to have it welcomed like that. So I had that one experience, you know, um, it's very different to watch it alone or with an audience. I think it takes on different things. There's sort of recognition factors that pe the people in the audience have about themselves or even, you know, humorous things that I think strike people differently when they're together. But I think now that this has evolved into not being in theaters, which, you know, a lot of films of this sort of, um, budget sometimes they only get a three or four day release anyway mm -hmm. so i think it's been i think at first it was like oh shocking and then i think that we are all evolving about how we're going to watch certain things right now and i think it's been a great opportunity for the movie and the, and what it's about actually which is um i and so i think it's a, been a positive thing in terms of how people are viewing it right now and other things What's the biggest lesson you drew from this experience? The biggest lesson, um, well, probably trust myself a little more. You know, I think um, a lot of jobs you do, you kind of go in and out. And I really enjoyed and I had forgotten about just really sitting in and settling into a part. And I was very lucky with Hillary too, you know. Mm. Yeah, it's a really difficult thing to just pop onto a TV show, even if it's a recurring character and like really nail that right in the moment. What are some of the most difficult parts of trying to get that? I think it's like, I don't know, it's different for everyone, but I think when, and you're talking about when you're doing television and popping in and out, I think it's trying to 
um, <laughs> keep your nerves at bay because you don't know anyone. Um, you're coming in and I think you can sometimes feel like, well, I hope I'm doing the right, you know, like I think there's a lot of things that go with that. And when you begin to have a relationship with someone for, uh, you know, in terms of doing a film every day, you know, it settles in a different way. I think there are two different kind of talents uh, mm -hmm. doing that. And you really have to steal yourself. I mean, I always felt like it was the first day of school on a lot of jobs. Um, but, you know, a job like Mad Men and stuff, I knew everyone there. Right. So I didn't feel the same way then. Well, yeah, I mean, I was just thinking about that because obviously your husband's there, you knew everybody. How did that compare to just, yeah, it's a different type of role, but it's still my husband that I'm on set with. Oh, um, no, that makes me nervous, too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but I knew Matt Weiner, and, and um, it was such a great part. You know, that made me actually less nervous. And, and you also feel like you're in such a disguise, you know, with the costume and all that. I, I love doing that job. I mean, that's one of the best shows ever. You know, it's not, it's not a stretch to say that. Why do you think that show resonates so deeply still all these years later? Because I think a lot of the same things are still going on, you know, um, different clothing. But, you know, I think, you know, I, I don't know if the point was some people might be, oh, we've changed a lot in the workplace. But I think maybe that might have been saying maybe not so much. Hmm. I think that's why it resonates. Yeah, I think it's a tough concept because you look, it's like, yeah, progress has been made. But at the same time, a lot hasn't changed. Like your husband's in Mrs. America right now. And I'm watching that yeah. with my wife. And it's like. 50 years ago, we're talking about the same things we're dealing with right now. Absolutely. Isn't that good? I've just yeah. seen the first two episodes. Um, and it's, I think it's fantastic. And I was going to say the same about Mad Men. It's like also, they were a wonderful world that Matt made. You know, I mean, really, I think that's also why it caught on to in his writing. Good You've writing. had the opportunity to enter a lot of really interesting worlds. Like, I, you know, I remember you from Homeland early on in, in that whole series. And that just recently came to an end. What do you remember from that experience? Well, when you asked me, what's it like to go do a job in the middle? Like, I was such a fan of the show. Yeah. And I came in, in the third year, and I don't know if I'd ever met them before. I remember going, is she, you know, is she Southern? Is she, you know, I didn't really know <laughs> right. where to go with that. And that's the kind of thing. But I was such a, I was so happy to be on that show, you know. And um, it's so funny. I was just thinking, like, Timmy Chalamet was my son on that. and. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. It's always nice to be with really good people trying to do good things. So reading up on your story, like this business has, has been the family for quite some time, not only current family, but growing up. Was this always going to be the path for you? Like what were some of the other interests early on when you were trying to figure out what you're going to do with your life? I don't think I really had other interests. And I don't know if that's a, a gift or a burden, but I think I knew, you know, what I wanted to do. And I studied pretty much on the weekends when I could. So I was pretty focused. Um, you know, there's moments where you go, oh, I wish I'd gone to college. I mean, I really started to work right away, but I always studied because my parents were very much geared for that. Like, mm -hmm. take this, you know, you have to learn this and study it. Yeah, and it's good you did it from a young age. Like, it would have been awesome to go to college, but at the same time, mm -hmm. like, you kind of got a leg up on the business and I'm sure you grew up a little bit quicker than some other people around you. Yeah, probably. And I, I, I felt blessed that I knew what I wanted to do. Are there things you miss about like the old way the entertainment business used to be? Or are you pumped about you know, all the streaming platforms and all the different parts that come with it? Well, I think when, no, I, w I think I would miss, and I don't know what's going to happen, collective movie viewing. Um, I think that that's part of the reason some people, you know, same with her and, and all those things. It's, you know, actors spend a lot of time alone, <laughs> you know, and it's, it's, it's sort of this collective, you know, I mean, in a way it's, it's like this, like what we're doing also, you know, you're, it's taking place and we're able to communicate and we're all lucky we get to do that. But does it take the place of human contact and, and collective viewing and, um, I don't know. I think it's twofold because mm -hmm. I think it, this is a great opportunity for a lot of things that wouldn't get seen to get seen. I think so. both should exist. I think it's awesome that you can just watch things right in your living room. But like I saw once upon a time in Hollywood in the theater and like people are laughing and having emotional reactions like you need that or if it's a play, yeah. same sort of deal. Like that, that's such a huge part of the whole deal. Some movies like that movie is made to watch in a theater. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, I, I, I just think it's just perfection. I've seen that like three times. 
you know, so, um, yeah, I think both can exist. I hope one doesn't outweigh the other. We'll see what happens in our world, you know, hopefully. So once things get going again, what are some other things you want to do? What's on the docket? You know, what can we look forward to with you? Well, I don't know. You know, I just did a movie called Worth that Michael Keaton is a uh, play that was about 9-11. And um, I don't know what's going to happen to these things that have already been filmed. Uh, the Climb, which was at, uh, was about to be released in May. Um, I was supposed to do a TV show in LA. You know, like, so um, everything's on hold. My husband and I were, you know, on hold, but we're feeling very, um, you know, grateful right now because we can all be, my son's here, he left school, my mother is here. Um, I don't know, I have a lot of uh, big question marks, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I I'm hope. right there with you. Yeah, I bet, you know? Yeah. We'll see what happens, but Talia, thanks so much for hanging out. You had a wonderful performance in this and I look forward to talking to you down the road. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much.